Hey everybody, welcome back to the Clean Energy Edge. Over the last couple of episodes, we've talked about two big shifts. One, how America's solar manufacturing is finally coming back to the U.S. And two, how electricity demand is climbing faster than we've seen in decades. Today, I want to talk about what happens when those two realities slam into a third one. And that is that the grid itself has become the bottleneck. And this isn't really new. And also why behind the meter, CNI and residential projects are one of the smartest plays here in the 2020s. But before we dive in, if you find this information valuable, hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. Now let's get into it. And let's start with the obvious question. If we know demand is rising and we know clean energy is the cheapest new power, why aren't we just building a ton of big utility scale projects and calling it a day? Well, it's because in the U.S., these projects are stuck in line. Interconnection queues at the big grid operators are years long. Developers submit a project. It sits in the queue. Studies drag on. Costs go up higher than expected. And a lot of those projects, they just die on paper. Then you stack on top of that transmission upgrades that take years to plan and permit. Rising equipment and financing costs. And now, thanks to the big billionaire bill, accelerated deadlines on the ITC and PTC and weaker bonus credits. So we've got this weird situation where the technology is ready, the demand is there, but the process and policy are burning up the clock. I mean, we absolutely still need utility scale projects, but if you're betting everything on that pipeline, you're betting on slow and uncertain. That brings us to the other side of the story, behind the meter projects. So what do I mean? I'm talking about commercial and industrial solar and storage systems on rooftops, parking lots, campuses. Those power small businesses, manufacturers, schools, and more. And then you also have the residential side. Homes account for nearly 40% of U.S. electricity use, making solar plus battery storage a major opportunity to cut grid demand and boost resilience. These systems live on the customer side of the meter. They don't need massive transmission upgrades or to slog through the same interconnection nightmare as a 200 megawatt utility scale project. And that gives them three huge advantages right now. First, they protect the customer. If you're a business owner, you're staring at rising electricity costs, increasing grid instability, and more frequent please conserve notices in the summer. Behind the meter clean energy generation and storage lets you offset the highest cost kilowatt hour on your bill. You can ride through outages and brownouts and get some control back over a line item that's only going to go one direction, and that's up. For installers and CNI developers, these are shorter, faster projects. You're not waiting five years to find out if a transmission upgrade killed your project economics. You can design, permit, build, and get paid in a reasonable time frame. Second, behind the meter doesn't just help the customer, it helps the grid. Every kilowatt hour that's generated and consumed on site is one less kilowatt hour the grid has to deliver at peak. When a large warehouse or factory installs solar and batteries, they shave their own peak demand. That reduces strain on the local feeder and on the bulk electrical system. When neighborhoods add rooftop solar and some storage, the utility isn't pushing quite as hard during those brutal summer afternoons. So this isn't necessarily about going off grid. Behind the meter is actually one of the best tools we have to keep the grid from breaking while we race to add new generation. Third, and maybe most important, behind the meter works on the timeline we actually have. CNI and residential systems can be designed and permitted in months. They can be built in months and they can start delivering value in the same year the decisions made to implement those solutions. Compare that to a big utility scale project stuck in a three-year interconnection study, or a transmission line that takes a decade to build, or a large gas or nuclear plant that won't come online until sometime in the 2030s. Meanwhile, the big billionaire bill is tightening the tax credit window, demand is still climbing, and utilities are warning about capacity shortfalls. So if you're an installer, a developer, or a business trying to make smart moves in the next few years, behind the meter is where a lot of the realistic opportunities live. Think about the through line from the last few episodes. We've rebuilt the solar and storage supply chain here in America. We know electricity demand is rising fast, and we need a lot more generation. The big centralized system, interconnection, transmission, federal incentives, 
that is an ever increasing bottleneck. So the question becomes, where can we build clean energy that actually gets done on time? And the answer for a huge part of the rest of this uh, decade is behind the meter, on rooftops, on parking lots, on campuses, and on homes. Utility scale clean energy is still critical for the long term, but if you're trying to keep lights on, keep bills under control, and keep your business or your customers out in front over the next decade, behind the meter projects are one of the smartest moves you can make. They protect customers, they reduce stress on the grid, and put our own new domestic manufacturing capacity to work right now, not someday after the queue clears. If this episode got you thinking, share it with a fellow developer, installer, or business owner, and let's keep talking about how we can build the future in a way that actually works on the timeline we've got. We'll catch you next time.